I, uh, I, I, I didn't mean, I mean, it wasn't me who brought him in, uh, of course. Maud just referred to this young journalist who'd lately gone to New York. Your wonderful country, as she calls it. I, uh, I, I recognize Mr. Denture, of course, and without meaning any harm, I, well, I didn't say, there wasn't much to say. I'm Merton Denture and I am trying desperately to find New York. And how does one do that, Mr. Densher? I walk. And what have you found? I've found I like side streets and that the stretch of Lower Fifth Avenue has a mild and melancholic glamour that I love. In the summer, after the crowds have left, you wouldn't believe how peaceful it is there. You know it? Of course. You walk? Always. The first place to feel this city is in your feet. The low rumble and the deep beat of its heart. Didn't you make him some kind of promise? Did I? About visiting him, if you ever came to London. I don't remember. You should travel. I would like to show you London in the same way you have shown me New York. Oh, how have I shown you New York? You've just been in my drawing room a few times. Ah, but often the drawing room holds the whole city. The casual splendor of your whole house, like a, a happy accident. Is it? None of it's for show somehow, it's just for appreciation. Oh, the heavy glories of the London drawing room, all strung up piece by piece. The gentleman is still in America. He had a great deal to do there. In fact, I may not have thought of London at all if I thought he was coming back. I said it hadn't been so long as to make you as yet great friends. Was that right? It's odd that he should so instantly fit. How small the world is. You know what struck me, though? Ma didn't say much. Have you heard of him from Kate? Heard? Not a word. Why should I? Well, Maud asks me to suggest to you that it may be better not to speak of him. That is, unless Kate speaks to you of him first. But Maud thinks she won't. Is there something between them? No, I gather not. But Maud's afraid of something. Or perhaps it might be more correct to say she's afraid of everything. What, of their liking each other? My dear child, we move in a labyrinth. Abysses. I want abysses. You would never do so dire a thing as to come to London without looking me up. I envy you your freedom, Millie. <gasps> of course, you would like her niece to marry Lord Mark. Hasn't she told you? Kate said she didn't know what Maud wanted with Lord Mark. Or with her. Are you all right? You've gone quite pale. All she has told me is nothing. A drop in the ocean to what she has not told me. So where are we going? To see my sister. She's quite on another geographic. You won't find her on any social map, that's for sure. Turn the page over and over of the social atlas and read through everywhere, everyone. There, tucked right at the back, you'll need a magnifying glass to see her name, almost not wanting to be found. He has been here where I am sitting. His eyes have rested on your face. And you have looked beautifully back into his. We must go over the bridge, for starters. All these separations. What's the matter? What? I don't know. You have a strange look. Like you're watching me. You look so beautiful today. <laughs> I'm all edges and corners. And how well they sit with you. Go up to the children. They've been waiting for you. They want a story. Bertie's in bed. He's coughing again. This house is too damp, Miss Thiel. The children take a chill. It's easily done. Light the fires in their room, Marion. I told you. Coal is coal. Yes, and you can afford it. There's a hundred things I can afford, Kate, but which one do I choose? The house is not damp. It's just freezing. Hello. Hello. I'm a the children love their aunt. She comes and goes. It's always easier to be more delightful when your stay is short. They sound lovely. I can hardly hold on to Bertie. And his sister wants... She's like Kate in that way. The two little ones hardly know anything. And then there's this man. This man who could break everything to pieces. I beg your pardon? This person in love with my sister. 
If you care for Kate, do you care for Kate? Of course. It would be quite too dreadful. One must do something. Pardon? You must prevent anything coming of, of it. what? Mr. Densher and Kate. She hasn't spoken of it. No. You must look after my sister. Don't say a word of it to Kate that I've spoken. Is this man so dreadful? He is poor as poverty, and I know what that is. It's what my aunt thinks. She won't hear of him. He won't either be a public man or a rich one. If he was public, Aunt Maud might help him. If he were rich, she would swallow him whole. But as it is, she taboos him. You all think so tremendously of money. It comes as a subject of indifference easier to some people than others. Marion, the baby wants you. Would you please excuse me? Have you made her cry now? No, Bertie bumped her. He didn't mean to. We were doing donkey rides. I wait. You keep me waiting. I hate this, my small shabby questions. My face in the mirror. I want to run away. I don't know what I want to do. I can feel you upstairs, knowing him. And still you don't speak. Do you love him? Do I? Only the future running back towards us will tell. In The Wings of the Dove, Kate was played by Lindsay Marshall, Merton by Blake Ritson and Millie by Anna Maxwell Martin. Lord Mark was played by Toby Jones and Aunt Maud by Claire Higgins. Susie was Barbara Barnes, Marion Deborah McAndrew and Croy Jonathan Keeble. The Wings of the Dove was written by Henry James, dramatised by Linda Marshall Griffiths and directed in Manchester by Nadia Molinari. And you can hear what happens when Merton returns to London and Kate engineers a meeting with Millie in the second part of our classic serial, The Wings of the Dove. That's next week.